Hi, hello, good day, grade 8 learners. This is teacher Romeo again, and welcome to another video lesson. And I will be doing my best again to try to simplify this module so that even though your teachers are not there with you to help you out and guide you through this module, at least I can help you out through this video lesson. So without further ado, let's start. So this is Science 8, the prepared module for quarter one, and this is the kinetic energy. Let's start. At the end of this lesson, you are expected to, number one, we're going to define kinetic energy. Also, we will determine the factors that affect kinetic energy of an object, and we will also calculate the kinetic energy of an object but before we start let's review first if you watched my previous uh, video lesson we talked about module 4 which is the gravitational potential energy so i bet alam na alam na ibig sabihin ng gravitational potential energy and you would easily uh, understand and you would easily know if an object at a certain height ay meron ba siyang potential energy or gravitational potential energy or wala. But to define it, gravitational potential energy is the energy that an object has because of its position. Potential energy can also be thought of as a stored energy or energy possessed by an object at rest. So yung mga bagay na di gumagalaw, these are the objects which has this potential energy. The potential energy is a result of an object's position, the mass, and the acceleration of gravity with a constant value of 9.8 meter per second squared on the Earth's surface. Of course, if you'll be going to the moon or other planets, the gravity, the pull of gravity would be different. Like in the moon, it's going to be like 1.62 meter per second squared, something like that. Okay, now let's move on to the real topic na pag-aaralan natin ngayong araw, which is the kinetic energy. Now, to define it, kinetic energy, it is a form of energy that an object or a particular ha or a particle has by virtue of its motion. So, kabalik na siya ng potential energy. Kapag potential energy uh, at rest or hindi gumagalaw yung isang object, pero pag kinetic energy... It is an object in motion. So, gumagalaw siya. Kinetic energy is a property of a moving object or particle and depends not only on its motion but also on the mass. So, sabi rito, yung energy, kinetic energy daw niya, hindi lang siya tungkol sa mass, hindi lang siya tungkol sa movement, whether uh, upward, downward, or whether going to the right or going to the left. The mass also plays an important role para ma-determine natin if the kinetic energy is high or it's going to be lower. Kinetic energy is a scalar quantity. Pag sinabi natin scalar quantity, it only has magnitude. Unlike pag mga uh, velocity, uh, force, these are considered vector quantity. Pag vector quantity, they have magnitude plus the direction, whether it's upward, downward, to the right, to the left, to the right, to the left, something like that. Now, let's move on. Let's have an example here. Since um, kinetic energy is actually directly proportional to the mass of the ob object and also directly proportional to the square of the velocity. But we'll, we'll try to uh, dig deeper tungkol dyan sa directly proportional. But let's go to this uh, picture muna. I have here a one, two, three, it's an eight-wheeler truck and a car, a red car. Now, let's say, for example, both of them uh, do have the same velocity. But as you can see, the other one is, is greater in mass than the other. So which do you think has the greater kinetic energy? Is it the truck or the car? What do you think? Correct. The truck do have the higher kinetic energy because as I've mentioned, kapag mas mataas yung mas niya, and since both of them are on the same velocity, definitely 
yung track na mas mataas yung mass, ang mas mataas yung kinetic energy. Now, another example is ito naman, dalawang kotse. Let's say these two cars do have the same mass. But let's say the green car has higher velocity compared to the, is that a pink or a peach one? Which do you think would have the greater kinetic energy? Is it the green or the other one? Correct. The green car, since it has higher velocity, then definitely the kinetic energy of that car would be higher also. All right. Is, is that clear? All right. Let's move on. Kinetic energy can be associated with different types of motion. So we're, we're, we're going to talk about two types muna. So the motion of an object may be translational, meaning motion along a path from one place to another. Example, ito yung mga kotse na nasa highway. So these are translational. And also, another type is rotational. Pag sinabi namang rotational, it moves along an axis and the combination of horizontal and vertical motion or the vibrational. Pag sinabi rotational, example nito, let's say yung... Uh, Ferris wheel, kasi paikot siya, di ba? Or yung electric fan na umiikot. Or pwede rin siyang roller coaster. Kasi si roller coaster, meron siyang combination ng horizontal. Pag horizontal, pahiga. Pag vertical naman, patayo. So, pwede siyang uh, going left, right, or pwede rin siyang going up, down. So, roller coaster is best example ng rotational. Now, the kinetic energy depends on both mass and velocity and can be expressed mathematically as shown in the equation below. So the main equation natin for kinetic energy is mass times velocity squared over 2. Remember, as I've mentioned earlier, kinetic energy is directly proportional sa mass. Review natin, pa ano ba ibig sabihin ng directly proportional? Ibig sabihin, as the mass increases, then the kinetic energy will also increase. Okay? So, kapag tumaas yung isa, tataas yung isa. Pag ibinabaan natin yung mass, yung kinetic energy rin niya, bababa. Ba. Now, kinetic energy is also directly proportional sa square ng velocity. Ibig sabihin, itong velocity, squared siya, di ba? Ibig sabihin naman nun, kapag pag dinoble natin yung velocity, yung kinetic energy naman niya, hindi lang doble, quadruple, four times ang bilis niya, kasi squared nga siya. So, yun din, kapag tumasin yung velocity, tataas din yung kinetic energy. Pag mababa siya, bababa rin yung kinetic energy. Now, in symbol, pwede rin siyang Ke is equal to 1 half mv squared. 1 half, pwede nyo rin siyang isulat na Ke is equal to 0 0.5 mv squared. Ibig sabihin ng kalahate. Where, m is the mass in kilogram, v is velocity of the object in meter per second. Again, yung mass, kilogram. Kapag ang given sa problem ay grams lang, kailangan i-convert nyo muna siya sa kilogram bago nyo gamitin yung formula. Ke, of course, is kinetic energy, which the unit is joules, or capital J, or kilogram meter squared uh, per second squared, or pwede rin siyang newton meter. So, yun ang mga uh, pwedeng uh, unit ng kinetic energy. Same goes with potential energy. Now, let's try solving these, prob uh, these kind of problems. The first one, basic muna tayo. Gamitin natin yung main equation. So, the problem is, what is the kinetic energy of a 45 kilogram object moving at 13 meter per second? So, if you have a notebook and a pen, you can, write, uh, you can try to solve it and see if your answer is correct. So, let's uh, understand the question first. Sabi rito, ano daw yung kinetic energy ng 45 kilogram na object na merong velocity siya o yung bilis niya, speed ng 13 meter per second. So, the given R, 45 kilogram is your mass and you also have 13 meter per second which is your velocity. So, we are looking for the kinetic energy of this specific object. So, are you trying to solve it? Okay, let's see if we got the correct answer. Of course, the main equation that we'll be using would be Ke is equal to 1 half mv squared. So we will, only, we will just substitute the values. 
So you have Ke is equal to one half m. The mass is 45 kilogram, and then you multiply that by the square of uh, the velocity, which is 13 meter per second. So square mo na natin yung 13 meter per second, so you get 169. Yung unit niya squared then m squared over uh, m squared per s squared or second squared. Multiply niya siya uli sa 45 kilograms bago niya siya i-divide by 2. Then 45 uh, times 169, you get 7,605 kilogram meter squared, uh, uh, second squared. Tapos, since 1 half ang kailangan natin, i-divide na lang siya sa 2. Okay? So, divide niya sa 2 yung 7,605. Then, you would get KE is equal to 3,802.5 kilogram meter squared per second squared or joules. Para mas maikli, pwede ng joules na lang or capital J. Again, your answer should be 3,802.5 joules. Did you get that? Okay, so this is pretty basic. Now, the question is, there are some problems where given na yung kinetic energy. So, what we need to do is to derive the formula from the main equation. Example, if the velocity is the one which is unknown or dapat natin kunin, so what are you going to do? What formula will, be, will you be using? So, let's go back against the main equation which is Ke is equal to 1 half mv squared. So, Etong Ke is equal to 1 half mv squared. Pwede rin siyang ano eh. Ke is equal to 1 mv squared over 2. Kung papahabain mo siya, kung napansin yung kaninang formula. Now, since over 2 siya, ang gagawin natin is cross multiplication na lang tayo. Kasi technically, ayan, so, technically, si Ke over 1 yan, automatic. Tapos, si mv squared, or 1 mv squared, over 2 siya. Sa so, nakuha yung 2? Kasi 1 half. So, pag, pag nilatag natin, over 2 siya. So, ang gagawin natin is cross-multiply natin Ke times 2, and tapos 1 times mv squared. So, Ke times 2 is 2 Ke equals 1 times mv squared would be 1 mv squared. Automatic naman yung 1, kahit tanggalin nyo na yung 1, okay na yun. And then, after that, since ang hinahanap natin ay velocity, all we have to do is to divide both sides by m. So, divide natin yung 2ke by m, divide natin din yung mv squared by m. Tapos, para matira na lang dyan, sa right side is yung v squared, i-cancel natin yung m Sa right side, tapos, pag na-cancel na yan, then you would have uh, v squared. Ipalit na lang natin ang pwesto. Matitira mo dito ay v squared is equal to 2ke over m. Okay? Eh, ang kailangan natin, velocity lang din natin kailangan ng squared. Anong gagawin natin para matanggal yung square dito sa velocity? So, ang gagawin natin is, is square root natin both sides. Kasi pag in-square root mo yung v squared, square root pa nun, kakancel mo yung square, square root ng v, tapos kakancel mo rin yung square nya, tapos, ang magiging sagot mo na lang dyan would be this. ba? So, natanggal mo na yung square sa v, tapos natira is square root sa kabila, so your formula, after deriving it, would be v is equal to the square root of 2ke over m. Ang haba, di ba? Kasi usually, ang ginagawa ng ibang students, pag nakita ng formula ay ng problem, dinediretsyo na nila isubstitute yung values sa main equation, tapos doon na lang sila mag, mag-solve. Pero ako kasi, mas gusto ko yung alam, ng, alam ninyo kung paano dinederive yung formula bago nyo sagutin yung problem. Now, this is for the velocity yung wala. What about kapag yung mass ang wala? We'll be doing the same thing from the main equation. K is equal to 1 half mv squared. Tapos, ayan uli, Ke over 1 is equal to mv squared. Pwede rin siyang ano eh. 
instead na yung over mo, pwede mo rin siyang i-times both sides by 2. So, KE times 2, you would get 2 KE. 1 half MV squared times 2, then you would get 1 MV squared. So, pwede rin yun. Tapos, since ang hinahanap natin ay mas, kailangan ng matira lang dyan mas. So, i-divide mo siya both sides by V squared. So, divide mo siya both sides by V, v squared para matira yung M. Cancel out mo yung V squared sa right side. Tapos, matitira na lang is 2KE over V squared. So, lipat lang natin sa kabila, your mass, the formula for mass would be 2KE 2 K, 2 over V squared. Haba ba? That would be the formula. So, pag nakita kayo ng problem na may kinalaman sa kinetic energy, tas ang hinahanap ay mass, pwede nyo na lang kopihin na lang itong formula na to, tas diretso na kayong mag-substitute and mag-solve for the mass. Now, let's try an example related to this. What is the mass of an object with a kinetic energy of 100 joules and a velocity of 5 meter per second? So, ang hinahanap natin dito ay mass of an object. Tapos, yung kinetic energy daw niya is 100 joules. Velocity niya is 5 meter per second. So, main equation is Ke is equal to 1 half mv squared. And then, you have m is equal to 2 Ke over v squared. Ito yung formula na derived natin kanina. Substitute natin yung values. So, you have 2 times 100 joules, which is the kinetic energy. Divide siya sa 5 meter per second square mo pa. Okay? Are you following? Okay, so M. So, 2 times 100, then you get 200 joules. And then, 5 meter per second square. Then, you get 25 meter squared per second squared. Tapos, divide uli natin siya. 200 divided by 25. You should get 8. And the unit would be kilogram. As you can recall, yung joules can also be kilogram meter squared per second squared. Ay yung nasa baba niya, meter squared per second squared. Pwede mo na lang i-cancel yung meter squared per second squared sa taas, tapos yung meter squared per second squared sa baba, ang matitira mo na lang ay kilogram. That's why your unit for mass is 8 kilograms. Alright, it would look complicated, but once you know the formula and how to... Uh, substitute the values and I'm sure you will be able to get perfect scores sa kahit anong problems related to kinetic energy. Okay? Any questions? If you have questions, we will talk about that on our uh, lesson uh, when we meet each other again. Okay? Again, this is Sir Romeo again. Thank you for watching and wait for my next video lesson. Have a good day. Goodbye.